India, a land of picturesque beauty with a population of over 1.3 billion. A land where people of different religions, beliefs, different attires and different cuisines stay together celebrating all the festivals. Despite the differences, our India is united through diversity. A land where its people are like different beats joined together by an invisible string of love, kindness and humanity. To sum up, our incredible India is a land of art, colours and craftsmanship. Mati Ke Rang, the colours of India. As the name suggests, this programme is an endeavour to introduce you various unique and unseen aspects, colours and talents of India. Through this program, we bring to you a series of documentaries from the Ministry of Culture that will take you on an amazing journey of exploring our incredible India's rich, varied and colourful culture and heritage. Pablo Picasso very correctly said that art washes away from the soul the dust of everyday life. In the last episode, we took you through the life journey of India's most legendary painter, Padma Vibhushan M.F. Hussain. We continue with this journey in this episode. A self-taught artist, Hussain's endless quest for his cultural roots and a fearlessly open-minded willingness to absorb diverse influences made him one of the most recognizable figures of Indian art. A genius in modern Indian art, Hussain created some of the most influential masterpieces such as The Horses, Ramayan and Mahabharata among others. In recognition to his contribution to art, the Government of India honoured him with Padm Shri in 1966, Padm Bhushan in 1973 and Padm Vibhushan in 1989. Why, why I, I choose in, in the in the in the 50s, 60s, this Ramayana, Mahabharata, because these are the uniting factor of 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 the core of the Indian culture. The ways in which he relates to the Indian people is very interesting because he is the one artist who takes on huge projects like a cycle of the Ramayana paintings, the cycle of the Mahabharat paintings. At the time that he made those choices, they were never considered to be reckless or dangerous. They have become so post facto because of a change in politics in India. He's able to address the epic and produce cycles of paintings which are by their very nature have both the aspect of the mythic in it, but they also have the very major aspect of the secular narrative of which the epics represent. You can turn them towards the mythological and religious, you can turn them towards the secular and the contemporary. And he plays with that with great uh, skill and imagination. I worked for eight years on uh, this um, Ramayana, with, uh, sitting with all the scholars, he used to call the scholars from Banaras, all the learned people, I had to sit with them, take notes, all the Sanskrit from Ramayana and, and Tulsi Das Ramayana. More than 150 paintings, watercolors, all these things on Ramayana, which is entirely the whole collection is there in Hyderabad. Then the another thing was the Mahabharata. Mahabharata, which is a more universal uh, a theme. You remember P. 
Peter Brook, who made a play on that. And that play is, I think, a fabulous play because he gave it a, a universal uh, character to the whole play. There were some characters which are African, as African, Japanese, all that. So this is the essence of that. And he got it. The horse. What a beautiful animal. When I was about 25, 20, 30 years old, I went to different parts of the in, in India, how they, in the folk farm, how they, uh, in, in how they make a drawing of a horse in, in Bengal, how they make an image of the horse in, in the south, like this. So I studied all those. Then went to Europe, how the Romans did the horses. Then I came out to, with my own restructure of a horse. Though I don't ride a horse, I don't go to races. But in reality, when you see the horse, to me, it's, it's a very rickety animal. Structurally on the canvas, you have to, you know, restructure. That's, and you must, you might have noticed, I never draw, paint the, the hooves of the horse. Because here, the main purpose is, the, the energy of the background goes into the legs, travels into the body. Horse is a metaphor of, of energy force. So that, that is the reason. Horses to him meant energy, really. And it is that energy which kept him going and kept on exploring different ideas at different places. He was one artist who was not scared of touching any subject. For him, what was important was to paint. What was important was what was immediately coming to his mind. He was, in that sense, not a contemplative artist, like Ram Kumar or Tayyab is. I would not say that he is any less of a thinker. His knowledge about Hindu mythology and other uh, religions of the world is uh, maybe unparalleled. His knowledge about literature is amazing. But the kind of work that he can put in, in any given 24 hours, is far more than what a normal human being can. He could identify with people around him, whether it was in the streets, whether he was on the pavement, whether he was in a small little restaurant, or whether he was in a group of intellectuals. At any, every single level, he could adjust to them and he could take these things in. The same way I have done with the human form, I have done with, even with the, when Mother Teresa, when uh, in 1969, when I met her, so I did, did paint the image of the Mother Teresa immediately. I said I must evolve a metaphor of Mother Teresa. So I, I went to Italy just to see the, all the cathedrals and churches, how the image of, of Mary and all those have been evolved. From there, I picked up certain lines. And then I came and I thought, I thought in, the, in the whole Christianity, the, the way they have depicted, it is more of the robes. You just see the hand and the face. The rest is all robes. So I thought, Robe is more important in Egypt. So I picked up the Mother Teresa sari. With the sari, different folds, so I shaped that sari. And there is no body inside. Uh, I once asked Hussein that why is this Mother Teresa that you have made, uh, you haven't made a face of Mother Teresa? He said, because Mother Teresa reminds me of my own mother, and I don't remember her face. So how will I make a face?
I was, I was bad about cinema. I was crazy about cinema. Actually, at one stage, I, I, I was thinking that I should become a filmmaker because my main, what you call, um, uh, passion was to communicate to the masses. That was my, till today I'm, that's the reason, that's why I consider cinema is the most dynamic medium of, of, of our age because it reaches out, this tremendous range reaches out to you. So, but the thing is, the, this medium, cinema is so expensive. I'm coming from a middle class, so I, I couldn't even dream of I could ever be able to make. But in my back of mind, it was there. And although I was fainting, but my vision was again a very cinematic vision, you know. And if you, if you, if you trace the origin of Indian Indian classical, you know, those mini, uh, those paintings, just telling a story of Buddha or Krishna. That is also sold in different sections on, on, on one, one plane, which is, which is not you know, un unlike the Western where you do an easel painting, where one, each painting is one painting, finished. But here, it is not, there are about 10, 20 images on one, on one plane, then it completes the story. So that was the tradition. So what happened in 1967, I got a chance to make a film. Because Indira Gandhi, when she came to power and she became, so she, she thought uh, the, the government body which, is, which makes film, film division, it is rotting. So she said, we must call some uh, advisor there. So she called some advisor from, the, from Paris, from UNESCO. There was Mr. Jean Bhavnagri. So, yeah. so he 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 was he was invited to advise what how to uh, put some fresh blood into uh, filmmaking. So he came and he advised that uh, to Indira Gandhi. I said, you should what you should do. You should give the films to be made by non filmmaker. So they chose me to make a film. And I was technically I never made a film. So they said, how can you do this? This, this medium is so highly, what do you call, technical. The, and they think I'm, I, I won't be able to handle it because being an artist, you don't bother about these technicalities and all that. You are a creator. So uh, first they asked me that you, you go into different departments of the film division. No. So what I did, I refused. I said, I don't want to see any, I don't want to know. Because now I'm, I'm here, I want to change the, the language of cinema. I want to demolish all the norms of filmmaking. I wrote a script which is a visual. I, I wrote uh, Cow Umbrella, they, th these are the units, Cow Umbrella plus Lantern minus a shoe is equal to woman. So he said, what does it mean? I said, this is it. <laughs> So, they, you know, so they, they used to ridicule me when I was making it. What I tried in the, in the film, okay, it used, in, at, at any stage, it should not become logical. But uh, unfortunately, these government officials, they, they didn't understand, they changed the title. They made it through the painter's eye, uh, through the painter's eye, which is ridiculous. <laughs> it's totally, but you, you can't do because it's a government thing. And uh, when it was shown so, uh, to all the critics after I finished it, everybody ridiculed me. He said, what is this? It is so juvenile, what is it? They said, nothing. So I, I, I remember I got the letter where they, they, they said, uh, the, the government, that this, there are some beautiful shots, but this film will never see the light of the day. I took that, that can. Uh, and, and I went to New York. I used to go to New York. So there I showed it to the Museum of Modern Art. I knew somebody from the Indian Embassy. He took me there. When he saw it, he was, he liked it so much. He said, we like to keep it in the archive. So I said, please write to my government. So they wrote to the government to send it. So they didn't know what to do. But here they had already rejected. 
and there was one uh, a, a Bengali in the uh, gentleman who knew something. He's in the information ministry. He sent this film to the uh, to the Berlin Festival in 1967, and there it got got the highest award, the Berlin Golden Bear. So when this happened, the whole thing changed. So I remember the same. People, my, my friend who, who had told me on my face that I'm a painter, as a painter finished, when they saw this film, they said that Hussain, you got a second lease of life as a creator. I, I consider that film medium is the complete medium. Uh, it incorporates all the arts, Literature, music, visuals, even architecture, a bit of structure you do it. So I think it's, it's the most uh, dynamic medium. And it has at the same time such a vast, far reaching, you know, it can reach to the millions. I was waiting to get a chance to make a film on, on Bune, which is which is my search, uh, main search, all my uh, painterly journey, you know. And uh, so again, I was, was looking for something in, in the film. In 1995, I, I saw a film uh, in, in, in India, which, is, it, which was a very popular film which was running for years, months and all that. The lady who was working in that film, the actress, her name was Madhuri Dikshit. She, she hails from the same area where my mother came, a Maharashtrian. So there is so much affinity, similarity to my imagination of my mother. In one sequence, she was dancing and with the, with the hips facing the camera, and she took five steps. And there I found with those steps, any lesser dancer would have made it vulgar. But when I, I noticed that this created a feeling of sanctity, you know, as if the, the, the dancers in the temple, you know, that feeling made me. So I, I went on seeing that film for many months. I saw it dozens of times just to, just to watch her and then just dreamt, wish I could make a film with her. And my, my image of a woman, I, I think I will be able to achieve that, fulfill that thing which, which I have in my imagination. Within, within five years, it happened.
when you think of the progressive artist group and the artists on the periphery, let's say whether it was Tayyab Mehta, Padam Si, Ram Kumar, Krishan Khanna, who all then sort of became the largest, in a larger sense, a progressive artist group. He was one of the few artists that I've known who sort of practices his religion. And that was an interesting aspect also because a lot of the other artists, religion, yes, they belong to religion because they were born into that religion. But for them, the religion was their art. And in the case of Hussain also, I truly believe that his religion is his art, but he also practices the religion that he was born in. And I think a lot of people don't realize his strong sort of attachment to Hinduism because it starts from where he was born, which is Pandarpur, which is a place of Hindu pilgrimage. So it was ingrained in him from then, which is Vishnu was the idol, Vitoba, the main idol there. Also strong associations with the Ram Leela from his childhood. And even today, Hussain has admitted this years ago, okay, when I venture on any new project, that I am to do, the first image I paint is a small Ganesh, with a small or large image. But that's the first image I do. And I don't think any artist, whatever religion he belongs to, if he can make that confession that he's been doing this right through, there's a certain degree of devotion to it. A lot of people might say that Muslims are not image worshippers. So it's not out of worship that he's doing it, but it's a certain sense of comfort that he gets from painting that image. Basically, when I'm, I'm not a perfectionist. And because I, I, I need a huge horizon, which is there, so I just devour that. That, 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 that fire, that, that hunger is here. Hussein has the ability to transcend and to survive, or I would like to put it the other way, to survive and then to transcend because he has an enormously affirmative relationship with life. And the greatest gift of God is health. So when, when I was bestowed with that gift, so why, so I want to use it to the hilt. So I lived my life to the, in the tremendous effort. And each day is, is again, is, is like a, as a and in, in the morning you get up and I say, you know, that, that you, today is the first day of the rest of my life. 